Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great cast on the day. And yes, I'm here with Gate from Echo Fox. Right off the bat, I got to ask you, you know, you guys just took down the undefeated team, FlyQuest. How does it feel after a 2-0 week? Uh, it feels fantastic. I, I mean, I think most people didn't expect FlyQuest to be the undefeated team, but they've been looking good. So I'm really happy that we were, t we were able to take them down. Awesome. And I got to go back to the game one. Camille gets locked in. It ends up going support. You kind of bamboozled everybody with that one. What went into that pick for you to be able to play that Camille support? I think it's actually really simple. In Korea, I noticed Camille was too OP, and I just started playing her support. And everyone in Korea server was just like in Champion Select, they were asking me, really Camille support? But uh, after I win the game, they add me, and they're like, what's the Camille support counter? So I just practiced. <laughs> I just practiced it a lot. Uh, maybe some people don't think it's so good, but I would like to think it's just a pocket pick. Awesome. And so final question here for you as well, Gate, is you weren't actually a member of Echo Fox last split. You were with Phoenix One. You're new to the team, but you've already helped them double their match wins from last split, getting that 2-0 this week. How have you helped turn this team around? Um, I think I have to give a lot of credit to my teammates. The, the team environment moving from P1 to Echo Fox, like everyone's worth ethic and uh, basically personalities are all different. Um, I think for me personally, I just fit right in and I'm looking to, you know, I don't want, I don't want Echo Fox to be at the bottom. I want them to be at the top. Awesome. Congratulations. Well, they are not at the bottom anymore. They are in that middle of the pack right now as you guys have a 2-0 week. Congratulations there once again, Gate. And now we're going to throw it over to the guys at the desk to break that one down. Thank you very much, Zyrene. Two a week for Echo Fox, moving to two and two on the season. I cannot help but smile when I yeah, see whenever Gate. Yeah, whenever you see Gate talk. He is, I mean, one, it's his energy, but it's also, you know, when it comes to the way that he talks about his teammates and the organizations and his goals and aspirations, it's always looking at other people and how he can bring his team up. Right, I mean, we talk about a lot of, like, outspoken players in the league. Most of them are kind of trash-talking when they do that, and a lot of the nice guys are quiet and just like, oh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Right. But, like, he's an outspoken and happy guy. It's, it's just great to have have, you know, see his interviews and his just overall outlook in the game. Right. I love to see that. I love to get a little bit of insight on that Camille support pick, having played in Korea, probably turning a lot of heads with it. Right. And now, of course, it, we're going to see if, you know, he ever gets it back because it's already such a top tier pick, not just in that, uh, you know, in that pocket pick scenario. I, who knows if he'll ever get it. Game two, or rather game three though here, let's talk about this champion select because Echo Fox has shored up within just a week's time a lot of weaknesses that we saw from them in week one, starting with their draft. Right, I think over the course of the week, there's enough, a number of things to look at. One, like the Sway counter pick is something that's scary. When you pick a tank, you have to ban that out. Now we see that they played standard team comps pretty well. I mean, Ash, Zyra, Kha'Zix, Nautilus, Orianna is almost as standard as the team comp as you get in this right. meta. So the fact that they were able to perform extremely well in this game as well is, is a great sign for them that they can, you know, flip the switch, pick a Camille support, or they can play standard. And that's the kind of stuff you want to see and it makes drafting against them a nightmare potentially. Yeah, and then if we get into the game itself, the first we're gonna replay rather we're gonna take a look at is a one fight for FlyQuest here. So a little bit of criticism will be thrown at Keith for getting picked. And this is probably the one thing that moving to week three, if I, if I had to pick a thing for them to focus on, it's that. It's position and rotating to objectives, making sure they don't get caught, because this stalled the game out quite a bit from what was a solid lead for them. I mean, and after this, Fly continued to make plays. So it wasn't just like this slowed the game down. They actually grabbed the lead back a little bit later, and it's the kind of thing where, like you said, this is the one thing that seems to be holding them back is, is there's a number of team fights. if you go back and watch this series, where Keith gets popped at the beginning of the team fight, and it right. happened last week. And he had a lot better team fights this week. He, he closed out a couple team fights on his own and played extremely well. There was one where he flashed a stun, which baited high, and it was really well played right but the problem is AD carry needs to be consistent it's probably the most important thing for an AD carry to be and right now Keith is inconsistent so that's what we're looking forward and his inconsistency right now is being shored up a little bit by the prowess of some of the other players on the team especially in the team fights maybe you could still look at lane phases for a couple of these guys and say hey they could you know step it up a bit right but when we get to the team fights you're looking at looper he's performing very well on that nautilus playing the front line knowing who to cc and go after gate himself on that zyro was getting pretty big and playing the team fights well and then let's talk about frog and shockwaves <laughs> yeah. For a moment because in th that was what won this game for them was his shockwave place right i mean it eventually got to the point where the game was basically even and it, it was his team fighting that really really brought it all back for the team and and opened the game up as well as the fact that even early game he was a pretty big factor uh in giving his team advantages but here you see just how nice he coordinates with his team acadian getting a flank off in stealth mode jumps in 
times it with the Oriana all to get onto the back line, pops them up, setting Acadian to go off with Looper. And then the back side of the team fight is pretty easy when there's that much threat on the other right. side. And that was just the final shockwave. I mean, this was after, sh you know, this shock was shockwave wave. after shockwave after shockwave leading up to this that was keeping them in the game. You can see the gold <laughs> graph here. And again, so this isn't to say that Echo Fox is free and clear of, you know, any criticism or uh, any improvement to be made. Like, they obviously still have work to do in making this a cleaner win when you're up 3K at 20 minutes. You don't want to see at 23 minutes <laughs> the goal right. going the other direction. Yeah, and I mean, there's Looper's teleports occasionally. Like, once Keith was getting picked off, Looper TP'd it in and just burned it. And there's, there's a number of times there's still some coordination issues. But overall, a massive step in the right direction this week for Echo Fox. And a confidence booster. So moving forward, having this 2 0 week under their belt will probably feel very good moving into practice. Player of the game this time around going to Froggen for that shockwave placement almost entirely. I mean, it's great to see him now operating on the Oriana. We've seen the TF, and we've seen the Anivia. So three solid picks for him that aren't even considered necessarily the S tier of mid lane champions. Right, I mean, we haven't seen him on those yet, but the fact that it doesn't seem like he's easily banned out is nice. Uh, he obviously still has the ability to carry now that we've seen on the TF and the Oriana now. And uh, especially early game, actually, I, th I think it was under-talked about a little bit, but he had a lot of pressure in the lane versus Corky. I know it's a nice matchup, but he brought the team to him. They got the first turret mid. There was a number of plays that kind of funneled through Froggen's individual play. And on the flip side of this, Fly quest sustains their first loss of the split so they're three and one you know <laughs> don't need to freak out yet but this will now kind of test the mental fortitude of this squad here uh, we heard the casters talking about a moon with great score lines on the evelyn still sustaining losses will he be able to look past that keep the positive mindset moving into week three i think i think so i think you look at both game one and game three some crazy stuff happened obviously game one with the camille pick and what it was able to do to their bot lane once again in game three his bot lane kind of got rolled evelyn's a pick that works really well playing through a bot lane that's either even or ahead just because of there's usually so much vision control bottom but then evelyn doesn't care about that right. so having an evelyn pick with a losing bot lane feels a little bad um and honestly this was a really really close series that could go either way and the fact that echo fox smash them in the draft game one with their flexing the Camille pick. Yep. I mean, if you take that game out, how does this series go? Right. So it, could it, go the other way. It's putting emphasis on, on the drafting and drafting well. Any any one small thing could tip the scales when it comes to League of Legends. Now Echo Fox unseats FlyQuest on number one FlyQuest, moving to three and one. We've got more League action coming your way. Cloud9 hit Thrift against Counterlogic Gaming right after the break. Don't go anywhere. Knocked up Looper goes in. Wombo there into the shockwave, and there's another gate. Takes down Artax. Stranglethorn's gonna miss his fly flash away, but there's the double in for gate. Uh, yep, I know this da, movie. Da, it da, ends badly da, for Keith. Straight into high there. Ulti up from Moon clips him on the edge, and that's a kill. I'm gonna hold this guy. Yep, yep. Kazakh flash. Up, up, up. Kazakh, Kazakh, help me, help me. Nice, nice. He will in, he will in. Good job. I have two seconds E. I'm gonna eat here, I'm gonna eat here. Good job. Change it. I will kill, I will kill. I will kill. Oh, got it. Good job. Oh, Ooh, that's yeah. bad. Oh, God. Acadian kicked out, and there's going to be the sniping on the gate. Out. He's going to fall. Acadian, Acadian goes oh. back in. Fight the snipe on the moon. That's a great shot down. And Looper goes in for a Baron, goes over. Out back, now. though. They've actually caught him. They've gone to the back of the carry. Straight on the oh, oh, shot. Oh, shot away from Froggen. Echo Fox. Together they stand and they fight it off. Flyquest going to get wiped. Echo Fox. Knocks down FlyQuest, giving them their first loss of the season and a 2-0 week for Echo Fox.